this video, I'm going to show you how to do animations using state changing with auto layout with a library I like to use um, called SnapKit. SnapKit is a DSL library for iOS and OS X. Uh, it is a way of declaring your, your constraints programmatically instead of using storyboard. So why, why would you do this? It's a lot better when you have the layout given to you by a designer or you know exactly how the layout is supposed to be without needing to, to draw it in Xcode ahead of time. This is good if you have a secondary drawing program, kind of like Sketch, where you can draw out the layout and then you, can, you are doing your design. So I'm going to show you how it works. So I just went ahead and installed SnapKit into into this Xcode project and I open the XC work, workspace file and I'm going to go ahead and open up a couple views. I have two square views, uh, a square view and a, a, a blue and a red square and then a button that changes state. So what I'm doing here is when the button is being called, I am changing the state in the update view constraints file. This is um, function. This is a function that gets called automatically when you use the storyboard, but basically what we're doing here is just calling it programmatically in code. And you can see that I'm doing it over here. So why is this useful? It's really good when you have a lot of states. Like over here, storyboard doesn't really let you update constraints. You, it's very static. So when you have one state, it assumes that that's the state that you're going to keep your program in. But in a dynamic app where it's like a game or a more advanced single page app, think like Uber, Snapchat, this is where this technology comes in handy. So how, how do we do this? Everything is done in the update view constraints uh, function. If you don't have the function already, you can actually define it and you're actually overriding a built-in function. So this is a typical function in all your in every UI view. What we do here is we're going to be using the SMP file, um, SMP library, and we're going to be updating the constraints here. So we dot, say dot SMP dot remake constraints, and then it's going to give us a closure to make the constraints. And it's very simple. We just call it make, and we can call it, we can type out make left, which is a left constraint where the left part of this view is. So think like this edge left is equal to self.view and that's it's going to automatically reference the left constraint in that view so we're telling it that the left constraint of this view is going to be matched with the left constraint of this view so self.view dot offset 20. so 20 is the padding offset which is in pixels so once we have all of these we can define the view so to change to change this up and show you what i'm talking about i'm going to change the offset to 150 so what we're doing here is we're matching the top layer of this offset of this view with the top of the phone. And then we're offsetting in 150 pixels. Right now it's offset 100 pixels. So when we recompile this and the phone loads, we can see that it's actually offset by 150 now. This is a 150 offset. This is a 100, um, 100 pixel offset. So this animation is actually going to become more intense because we have two states. We have state one, and we have a secondary state, which is state two, that we're changing every time the button gets pressed in the change state function. So now this square is gonna move over here, and then this square is gonna move over here. So let's show it out. So we see here that is actually moving up and diagonal now. And this works because of the way the update constraints works. When update constraints get called, it's the UI view will automatically generate the frames to get the view to the new constraint as long as we pass a duration. So if we change the duration here, and this is called when we call the UI view cl uh, class, we call animate. This is a static function. You can call it from wherever, and it gives you a callback that lets you do all your animations in here. When we actually call UI view constraints, and self view layout if needed is going to redraw the the scene to insert all the animations and all the frames in between the start 
and the end to make this animation work. And it's gonna do it automatically depending on how long the duration is. So if we extend the duration up to 1.5 seconds, this animation is gonna become a lot slower. So you see here, it's a lot slower now. And this is done automatically when we call the UI view update view constraints function. So this works for everything that doesn't touch the layer. So to take this to the next level, let's add another state. So if else if self.state is equal to one. So this is state one. And now we're going to add one more state over here, which is going to be state three. And we're going to increase the size to, let's say, 100, 100 pixels. And we're going to decrease the size to 30 pix 20 pixels. And now we're going to increase our state machine by one and recompile, we can see that it's going to automatically do those animations just like that. And super smooth, UI view does everything for you. You can add another state if you wanted to and say state dot three, and we can now move it to the bottom of the page. And this, it will automatically generate the right frames to make sure your animation is smooth because that's what the job of UI view does. So you see there, because it was offset from the bottom, um, it's offset from the bottom down, offset always goes down. It's gonna go under the page, but if we change to inset, we can see that buttery smooth animation that's gonna to go to right about here and it's gonna go back to normal. So you can see how this gets extremely complicated extremely quickly, how you can not complicate but draw very complex animations. So thank you for watching, hit that like and subscribe button